Hello, my name is Ian Sweeney and I've just spent the last week visiting the amazing country of Nepal. While I've been here, I've had the wonderful opportunity to visit some of the remote villages, meet the amazing people and see how Adra has helped to transform the lives of the people that are living here. I'd love for you to meet some of the people that I have met and to see how Adra has changed their lives. I invite you to join me on this journey of discovery through this video report. Adri UK has been working in Nepal since 2002, helping people recover from natural disasters, civil conflict and improving lives through community-based development. Our most recent project, launched in 2015, is called eLives. Simply put, eLives is a program that has been designed to enhance the lives of small farm owners in Nepal, primarily by introducing modern methods of growing vegetables and goat raising. The program is reaching 30,000 households across four districts. 600 local community groups have been formed where trained facilitators lead participants in learning a variety of new skills that will vastly improve their lives. As I toured some of the villages where eLives has been running for about a year, I was amazed at how much of an impact the program has already had. The people I met could hardly contain their enthusiasm. I quickly learned that there was more to the story here than simply learning how to grow more vegetables. The ADRA program here in this southern region of Nepal has been designed to help people break free from the cycles of poverty through helping them to improve their income. From the people that I have met, it has been an amazing success. There have been people who are now earning two, three, even four times more than what they were earning just a year ago. And with the principles that they have learned, everyone that I've spoken to is confident that this is just the beginning. Once trapped in a prison of poverty with seemingly no way of escape, they now have hope confidence for the future, not only for themselves, but for their children. How is this radical change possible? When I first heard about how ADRA had been making these amazing transformations in people's lives, I thought, well, maybe it's because of some expensive program, but actually no, it was about small, powerful interventions that have totally transformed people's lives. One of the most effective agents for change here in Nepal is simply education. People in this part of Nepal were already growing vegetables in their fields, but now with the techniques and knowledge that they have learned through the ADRA training program, they've been able to multiply their harvests and their rewards. Before, they were growing enough to feed their family, but now they're also taking crops to market, so boosting their income. Before ADRA came to work in our village, we were not getting very good harvests. ADRA came and did training sessions with our group to teach us new gardening techniques, such as how to make a small nursery to start our seedlings. I have been growing vegetables for the last 10 years, but I was doing it my own way without having any technical knowledge. 
We used to just spread the seeds on the seedbed without really knowing how deep to plant the seed. As a result, we would often get poor germination rates. After the project technician taught us how to build a nursery bed to start our seedlings, we got much better results. Now the vegetables get a good start before we put them in the field. We also learned how to make our own organic fertilizer and natural pesticides using locally grown herbs. This has really reduced the amount of money that I've had to spend on chemical fertilizers and pesticides for my farm. In the end, I make a much bigger profit. I'm in a field belonging to Ram Puridebe and she's harvesting aubergines or brinjal. And I'd just like to ask her, how has life changed for you since Adra became involved in your life with the farm in your field? After this project started, I expanded my vegetable farm because I knew more about improved methods of vegetable growing. There used to be a lot of insect infestations here. I have learnt how to set up insect traps to control the damage done by insects. After joining the group and attending the training sessions, I learnt a lot of modern technologies about vegetable farming. We have learnt proper nursery techniques for better seedlings. We have learnt how to make liquid fertiliser. We know how to use integrated pest management techniques. Because of this, I have been able to expand the size of my farm. It has doubled in size and so has my income. With the extra money that I am earning, I am now able to send my children to private school where they are getting a better education. I wish to thank the people of Great Britain for all the help that they have given to our village. Thanks to group cooperatives that have been set up, farmers are now connected to markets. What they are not able to sell themselves in the local village market, they can sell to wholesalers who transport their vegetables to the nearest town for distribution throughout Nepal. What a delight it was for me to visit a local village market and observe our beneficiaries engaged in commerce. I loved watching them weigh their vegetables on a hand-held scale, using a stone as their counterweight. They seemed to be so happy with their new source of income, cheerfully bargaining with their friends and neighbours for a good price for their vegetables. And what a beautiful produce it was. Organically grown, fresh picked, ready to eat. However, in order for this new industry to be a success, Adra realised that the people in the vegetable groups would need to be connected with larger markets. With so many farmers expanding their fields, there had to be a way to connect them with wholesalers. The community is somewhat remote and rather small, and there was a limit to how much anyone could sell in the local market. The closest city where the people could connect with wholesalers was about 30 kilometres away. Very few people here own a vehicle. The only way for them to take their produce to the city was to travel the distance by bicycle or motorbike, if you have one. Even then, you're not able to carry very much for each trip you take. This is a big problem for people living in remote communities. Even if you learn how to grow good crops on your land, you still need a way to get your goods to the market. If there was no way to get their produce to a buyer, most of their new crops would simply spoil in the field and all of the ADRA training would be in vain. One of the biggest problems that we have faced here in the past is how to get our produce to market. As we discussed this problem in our group, we came up with a very good solution. As a group, we formed a collection centre right here, close to where we live. We have located it right at our local village market. Whatever produce we're not able to sell at our local market, we can simply drop off at the collection centre. From here, it is transported to the wholesale markets by truck. We no longer need to worry about how we will get our vegetables to market at harvest time. I liked this idea so much that I have become a member of the Collection Centre Management Committee. Our new collection centre will buy all the produce that we can grow. 
we no longer have to travel a long distance to take our vegetables to market. Now everyone in our group can take their vegetables just a short distance to the collection centre. Because it is owned by our own group cooperative, we always get a good price for our vegetables. Raising goats was not a new idea to this community. Most families had three or four goats that they kept to supplement their nutrition. Unfortunately, many of the goats would die from disease and not too many people wanted to risk investing in raising goats for profit. All of that has recently changed in this community. ADRA began organising people who were interested in learning the goat raising business into groups. It was fun for me to meet these goat clubs, to meet the goats, to talk with the people about how raising goats has transformed their lives, their incomes. <laughs> we're in a village in the Sahali district of Nepal and we were amongst a group of women who are part of a uh, goat group and we're going to hear about what they are doing and how Adra UK has assisted in their formation. So could you please tell us what it is that the goat group does and how it has benefited your life. Before the goat raising project was started, I only had one goat. Adra invited us to join a women's group to learn modern methods of raising goats for profit. In the group sessions, we were trained in many different aspects of successful goat production. We learned all about animal health management, shed construction and breeding improvement. The programme provided a good breeding buck to improve the quality and weight of the baby goats. My herd has grown to nine and I'm already starting to see income from goat farming. I have been keeping goats for a long time, but in the past I've only been raising three or four goats at a time. I used to raise crops for most of my income, but now I've made the switch to goat raising. The training that we got from the Adra program has made all the difference. I used to have about eight goat kids a year, but about half of those would die because of diseases or other problems. Because of this, I never considered goats to be a good way to make a living. When the Adra project came to our village and proposed goat raising to increase our income, many of us were skeptical. We were told that the project was not going to provide us with any goats, only teach us new skills on how to raise goats. Some of my neighbours decided that since Adra wasn't giving out goats, there was no reason to join the group. I decided that I would at least go ahead and get the training and see what they had to say. I was amazed by what I learned. By the end of the training, I was confident that I would do well. And I have. After the training, I bought some goats and bred them with a the big buck that the Adra program is providing for the members. Already this year, I have had 30 kids and only two died. We have learned how to take measures against the spread of disease. We have also built a goat shed where the goats can spend the night. This has been a real help to decrease goat mortality and improve the well-being of our goats. We have had a few growing pains. At first, we spent a lot of our time going to the forest to collect fodder for the goats to eat. But now we have seeded our own land to grow food for my goats. Now we can collect fodder right by our home. My goal is to raise 150 goats this year, but then increase that. I want to build this up so that one day I have a herd of 200 female goats. This will produce about 400 kids a year. Already, we have seen a big jump in our income. With the extra income, we have sent our son to university in Kathmandu. He is doing very well, getting good grades. Some of my friends who chose not to join the group are now regretting their decision. As they come by our place and see the success that I'm having, they're now asking to join the group. There are no spots left in the program, so they're having to learn the techniques from me. Before I joined the Goat Farmers Group, I had only five goats. After I went through the training program, I invested in more goats and my little enterprise has grown fast. It has become so successful that my husband has joined me in the business. 
He usually goes away for months at a time to work in one of the Gulf countries doing construction. But we believe that we can now make more money just raising goats. We now have 50 goats, and it is a lot more time consuming to collect enough fodder for them to eat. I need my husband to help me. Our goal is to grow our herd to have at least 100 female goats, maybe more. With the growing goat population in the community, Adra realised that there would be a need for a specialist to help all the new goat herders with the health needs of their animals. There was no veterinarian in the community and it just wouldn't be practical to take sick animals into town for treatment. The solution was to select one person from each village where the eLives programme was running and send them for intensive training on how to care for goats. I had the opportunity to meet one of these village animal health workers. He told me how Adra had changed his life. After finishing my 12th grade, I was not able to get a job and was basically just sitting around the village, not doing much of anything. I started wondering if I should join others in my village who were leaving to work in one of the Gulf nations. But before I left, an opportunity came up for me to find work right here in the village. Adra needed someone who would be willing to train as an animal health worker. They would provide six weeks of training that would qualify me to become a local level technician. I discussed the opportunity with my family and they all agreed that it would be better to stay and work in the village than leave to work overseas. I made the decision. I went off for the training and am now working as an animal technician and doing quite well now. My services are in high demand. I also have a small shop where I sell veterinary medicine. This program has made a huge difference in my life. I was unemployed with no real prospects. Now I have good steady work with a good income that is meeting all the needs of my family and providing my children with a good education. This program has given the farmers of this village a new hope for the future and the future of their children. There is always a high demand for goats. Whenever the farmers are ready to sell, the goats sell very easily. Right now, Nepal imports much of its goat meat from India, so there will always be an immediate demand for goat meat. This tool I have in my hand is used to castrate the male goats. During my training program, I had the opportunity to learn how to do the castration. As I returned to the village, I was confident that I had learned the process. Let me show you the procedure. In many countries, young girls may not have the opportunity to attend school. If their parents are poor, it is difficult to afford the costs of sending all of their children to school, and boys often get the priority. Girls traditionally stayed home to help their mothers by tending animals, fetching water and firewood. What this means is that many women in our world today have never learned to read or write. This week I had the opportunity to visit a women's group where Adra is teaching the women some of the most important skills they will need to start their own home industry. I was surprised to discover that 38 out of the 39 women who were members of the group had never gone to school and had never learned how to read, write or do simple maths. Thanks to the programme, they are now learning simple literacy and numeracy skills that are changing their lives. I had the opportunity to talk with one of the women and she told me her story. I was born into a home that was very poor and my parents could not afford for me to go to school. I never learned how to read or write. My parents prefer that I stay at home to help raise my siblings, do household chores and raise goats. Since joining this women's group, I am now reading and can write my name and my children's names. I can now sign my name on documents. I have learned how to use the calculator and keep records. I am using the new skills that I have learnt in these classes to run my new goat farming business. 
I'm also hoping to start a small grocery shop here in the village in the future. All of this makes me very, very happy. I want to say a word of thanks to UK Aid, ADRA UK and all the implementing partners for running this programme in our village. There are 38 women in our group. Only one of us had the opportunity to go to school and learn how to read. Now we are all reading and learning how to write. We have learnt so many skills that are going to help us build a better life in the future. Thank you so much. Another woman, who was taking the business literacy training, invited us to come and visit her shop. As I spoke with her, she told me what the classes have done for her. In the ADRA classes, the instructor taught us about different kinds of business opportunities. I learned how to do maths and how to use the calculator. I also learned how to develop a basic business plan. This gave me a confidence that I'd never had before. Since there was no grocery shop in the village, I decided to open one myself. I took a loan from the group to purchase stock and open a shop. The store is doing very well now. I am very pleased. I am so glad that I joined in on this programme. My whole outlook on life has changed. My mind has been opened and I now see business opportunities everywhere. I wish that there were more classes. I would love to learn more. I will join any class that comes along. I am very grateful for what this programme has done. I am thankful to UK Aid, ADRA UK and all the implementing partners for all the things that they have done in our village. Whilst I've been here, I've had the opportunity to meet with so many people, one being the so-called ultra-poor. And they are called ultra-poor because they have no land. And so when ADRA came with the programmes, they were dealing with the poor who had land at least to work with. But the ultra-poor had nothing. They had no land in which to work or to make investments. I was able to meet with two of the ultra-poor and they told me their story of how ADRA was able to adapt its programme to help them. After the ADRA project started in this village, a local community mobiliser came to visit us to see if we would be interested in joining the group. We were very interested. We took all the classes and learnt so much about how to grow vegetables. The problem was, five of us in the group had no land to try out the things that we had learnt. Then someone in our group came up with the suggestion, why not lease some land? We found some land that was not being used and arranged with the owner to lease it at a fair price. ADRA helped us with the money and the group also contributed some funds. It has now been nine months since we did the first planting and we have had good harvests. We started with beans and okra. Then we planted cauliflower. Currently we are growing chilli in our fields. Now that we have seen how much money we are able to make from growing vegetables, it has given us the confidence that we need to lease the adjoining land and increase our profits for next year. The group will not need to help us this time. We are confident that we will be able to cover the lease and make a good profit. This programme has changed my life. After the death of my husband, I had absolutely no income. I had to rely on my parents for everything. Now that I have become a successful farmer, I'm able to cover basic expenses and provide for the education of my children. As I expand my farm next year, I will be able to cover even more of my family's needs. Because we have had no land, it has been difficult for us to get a start in any kind of business. No one was willing to lend us any money because they had no faith that we would ever be able to pay it back. Now, with ADRA's training and financial help, we have had a very successful year. People have seen how hard we have worked and they now see us in a different light. I believe that God will bless my efforts. The ADRA project has shown me the way and it is now up to me to move forward. A life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. 92% of our beneficiaries are women. We are working with 600 farmers groups. Out of them, three-fourths are in goat farming and one-fourth in vegetable farming. 
we have around uh, 13,000 direct beneficiaries. We try to improve their existing practices. They have been raising goat or they have been cultivating vegetables for so many years, but many of them didn't have basic knowledge of uh, vegetable and good farming. They are not applying the right kind of technology. They are not using right varieties, right time. So they are not able to get good benefit out of vegetable and good farming. So we try to enhance their skill and knowledge through trainings. Uh, this project is changing life. We believe that change doesn't come by chance. It does come by some definite action. After working just for little over one year, we have already seen uh, so many changes. One thing that has really stood out for me this week is how the people here in rural Nepal are embracing the new knowledge and skills they are learning from Adra. It was so inspiring for me to see how enthusiastic everyone was in putting their new skills into action and how quickly they've been able to see real positive change in their lives. This dynamic change was really obvious in the groups that I met. Groups have not only taught women to read, write and develop business skills, it's given them a real voice in their community. One woman speaking softly may not be heard, but when a group of 30 women join together, they're able to effect real change in their village. As a group, they can combine their resources and build wonderful things like a water system that will deliver safe water right to their homes. Now they will have a convenient source of water, not only for drinking, cooking and cleaning, but also a means to irrigate their vegetable farms right through the dry season, giving them more income to accomplish more for the village. This is the kind of change that can happen when we make the effort to partner with people, share a little of our resources and give them a little training and a little encouragement. Rather than sit back and hope that people struggling in poverty will one day catch a lucky break, we can join together in supporting the wonderful work that ADRA is doing to help bring about lasting change. I hope you've enjoyed our journey through Nepal, and it is thanks to people like you who support our work that we can continue to change people's lives.